Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to Going Medieval, what the game doesn't tell you. So we've selected new games, standard. The difficulty choice is up to you, but I would recommend if it's your first time playing, put it on easy. Uh, not very easy, um, and certainly not normal. Okay, so you go next, and you want to choose a new life. Okay, then it's next, and what you want is a valley and you want a large map size. Now, once you've done that, uh, what you want to do is maybe design uh, your heraldry and the name of your town. So your settlement name is up at the top. We'll just call this Perfectus. And the heraldry, again, you can randomize or you can uh, go in and edit and you can change all the elements that build it up. So as an example, it's a pattern uh, it uses symbols uh, B, C, and D, and A. So what we do is we can play around with some of the colors of the existing one or change the entire thing completely. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just give a blue here with the red. I think that looks quite nice. Finish up, that's our heraldry, and you go next. Now this is where the game doesn't tell you. So you get three initial settlers on the normal game mode. What it doesn't tell you is you haven't used all your skill points yet. Now it took me a few attempts to realize this. Uh, so we have our three characters and they have different skills. Now what you want to do is go to advanced customization at the bottom and tick the box. But as you can see, we've got various skills within the people and you want to have a certain skill set amongst your settlers. But here we go advanced customization you've only used 424 out of your maximum of 510 creation points now the game doesn't tell you this and it took me a few attempts to realize uh, that this was something that you needed to do so for uh, Ganilda here we're going to increase her botany and culinary as well as her melee skills now she's already quite good with medicine uh, at 13 so that's fine and Construction is currently zero, that's fine. So let's give her a one star on medicine that uses five creation points. So our second is Bella Green. Again, her star is on construction, so we're gonna level it up further. And carpentry and intellectual, we will also increase. Uh, mining is already quite good. Melee is 16. Uh, marksman, however, is 19. So let's give a star on that. And we're at 475 out of 510. Now Stanley Arkwright is our last character, so we want to make him a melee character as well. And again, you want to have two melee characters and one marksman for archery. And what we can do now is spend out the remaining points all the way up to 510. So animal handling is worth having for someone, as is bot uh, basically all of the skills are important. And you want to have a nice, good, solid breadth of skills as you do your characters. Now trial and error will uh, decide what you want to prioritize over other things, but as long as you've got a good general distribution, uh, you should be fine. Uh, the things that you want to ensure are medicine, uh, your melee skills for your two melee characters, your marksman skills for your uh, bow and arrow person, and then carpentry, construction, botany, animal handling, and culinary, and also intellectual. You basically want to do all of the main skills. Now, speechcraft, I haven't seen a huge need for as of yet. Uh, tailoring as well is something that's worth having. Um, but we do have those skills across the board. Now what you do by doing this is you have much more skill across your settlers than were you to just start the game. So we've now spent our 510 creation points. Now before you go next, look at this, age. Okay, you want to make your characters young. We've got some very old characters. You can change everything, height, weight, age, but what we will do is change the age of each person to 25. And what we will also do is um, then go next. Or you can also change your character's look as well. So now Ganilda is now younger, so let's give her not gray hair and maybe change the hairstyle. So let's go for, I don't know, there we go, that looks quite good. So Ganilda and Isabella both have the same hairstyle pretty much, and Stanley is uh, there, and he's not grey either. So no one's grey, everyone's young. Okay, so we've got two girls, one lad, 
that's fine. You can literally change every aspect of their look apart from their clothing. And now we've spent 510, we can go next. Okay, so we're on Perfectus, Standard Easy, A New Life, In a Valley. Now you go to Embark. Now I've turned off tutorial tips because obviously I've played this quite a lot and I'm showing you guys what to do. Uh, so we won't have those annoying pop-ups. Okay, so we are now into our settlement. The first thing you want to do is pause the game. Okay, so click pause. And what you also want to do is do a lot, have a look around. So decide where you're going to build your buildings. You want some clear territory. Uh, to be honest, this mud patch that we're actually on is going to be fairly good uh, for building anyway. Uh, so that is not a problem. Um, your next task is to use the allow. And then you want to allow all of your initial items. So there we go. And what you will find is one item normally is miles away from everything else. And that is a sword. Uh, which is up at the top there near Isabella and we haven't actually allowed it yet but we will later on uh, because we're going to sort out our characters as well because there's a lot of other stuff you need to do when the game begins. Now first steps you want to build your first initial building. You want an interior size of about 8 by 10 uh, so counting the squares we're going to work out the size and of course the game is currently paused so they're not going to try and construct uh, which is good so that we can put our windows and doors in before they actually try to start building uh, in general. Okay, right, so again, count the internal area. Make sure it's the size that you want. So as I said, about 10 by eight for your first initial building, and it will become a two-story building over the course of this episode as well. So we're gonna drag it out. And then what we want to do is drag up to the top wall. Oh, that's the wrong one, so go back. Now, if you want to cancel a structure, click on it and just click the cancel button. And that disappears. Go back to your construction menu and finish the wall. Okay, so now your wall's done. You want to put in at least one door. You can put in more if you want. I tend to only put one door into a building and put it wherever you fancy, and then put in some windows. I mean, this is purely decorative, uh, as far as I gather uh, from playing the game, but again, decide how you would like it to look as you build your settlement, uh, whether you want the things to be even, out of place, everything else, it's up to you. Now, next is wooden floor. So again, a whole interior area you want to put a wooden floor on, and next you want to go to your production buildings. So you want a butchering table, so QRE to rotate it round and put that into one corner. Your butchering table is for creating raw meat by carving up dead animals, and then you want a campfire. Now you can put it indoors, that's fine, it's not a problem, and you want a basic research table. So again, QRE to turn it round and get that in as well. Now next up, you want some sleeping spots. So you want at least five, I'm gonna put in six. So there we go, leaving a gap between each one. And then again, Q and E to turn it round. And there we go, so we've built six. There is another piece of furniture that you wanna put in, which is under the uh, rook and, uh, sorry, the um, dice and, oh, I'm trying to think of the word of the um, pawn. That's it, pawn. Okay, we've got some barley growing nearby. That's handy, uh, as it's a good crop to have. Uh, we'll be doing crops later in the episode as well. So I'm literally showing you everything that you need to do at the beginning of this game. Now you want to build a second building. This is going to be your storage. Okay, so it's smaller than uh, the main building where your people are gonna be sleeping. Uh, we'll build that across. There we go. Again, we wanna put in a door, but what you also want to do is use the mine button and mine this out inside. Now, the reason you wanna do this is for the purposes of the preservation of food right from the beginning of the game and I will explain this to you momentarily, but let's get back to designing the building. So we're gonna mine out the inside. Uh, again, you're gonna want at least a door. Doesn't matter where you put it, it's up to you. Uh, you can make it for short travel passages between buildings or whatever you wanna to do to um, kind of streamline the process of your settlers moving between buildings, or you can just build it for aesthetics. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so we've got our buildings in place. Let's run at high speed 
and get things underway. Okay, so the first thing that they're building is our storage room. Now the next thing you want to do is click all the trees that are 50, 50, not 15 wood, and click on the little ax. That will indicate to your settlers that you want to chop those trees down for the wood that they contain for your construction efforts. That's a dead tree, so it's 45 wood, so we'll cut that down. That's 50, that's 15, we'll leave it alone. That is 50, so we'll cut it down. Again, 50, so that's safe to cut down. Okay, and let's watch. So they are continuing to construct, and I am running the game at very high speed, uh, and you're perfectly capable of doing this yourself as well. Uh, it's uh, I find it just beneficial at the beginning of the game. So again, mark some more trees. That's a dead one at 45. Another 50 wood. Lovely. What about at this edge? Yep, that's 50. Chop it down. That's 50 as well. Chop it down. Again, 50. Chop it down. And what you're doing is you're marking them to be chopped down. So they're not going to immediately go and chop these trees down. They will use the resources that are available to them. And now we're starting to dig out... Uh, the basement. Now the only problem is because they've built the building now they can't necessarily dig out everything. This is not a problem and I will show you how to overcome this problem very very momentarily as we go through. Okay so let them keep building. Now what we want to do is switch to our building and go to wooden floor. Now we can put wooden floor across here that is fine and that will then allow them to dig out more. Okay, so we're in a fairly good position now. Uh, we can let them carry on doing their stuff, but there is a lot more that we need to do. So go to jobs, anything that has two stars, put it to a one for priority one, because they get double, uh, triple experience points uh, for doing this, or double. And then a one star is one and a half experience. So you want anything that's a, a two star to be priority one and anything that's a one star to be priority two. Now you will manually go in later and change some of these priorities depending on what you're doing. And the next task is to sort out your schedule. Now you want leisure time and you want some additional sleep. So throw in two extra hours of sleep. Okay, then leisure at the end of the day, two hours, and then work between. Okay, so you fill in the work. Now what you can do is hit copy, and then you can just paste it to the other people. So that saves time. And again, what you can do when you get any new settlers is the same. So look at your settlers, and what you're looking for is your marksman. So she is the marksman. So she is ranged. We're not gonna give her any shields, any headgear, or any armor, because she's a ranged person. So look at your two melee characters and decide who you want to have. So one you will do two-handed, the other you will do one. So the one-handed person has a shield and the two-handed melee weapon doesn't. So the one-handed, put a shield and armor for both of your melee characters. Now you might not necessarily have the armor yet, but once you get it, they will automatically put it on. Okay, so let's hit play on the game again. So we've now confirmed our jobs, our schedule, our management. The next to do is start harvesting. So I click the little basket tool there and what we're harvesting is red currant berries and long grass. Now long grass will give you hay and that hay will feed your goats or any other animals that you have. Now our cat, Firefly, who is currently wandering around, uh, needs meat or meals. Now, one of the first times I played, I'm just putting in some extra wooden floor where this guy has been digging, um, but when I first played, my cat died because I wasn't hunting any wildlife and we ran out of meat, so the cat starved to death, uh, which was a bit unpleasant, uh, but hey, it was a lesson to be learned. Now, the guy is digging up all of the uh, ground around him and what's gonna happen, This is I'd done this deliberately just so you guys could see, Oh, he's dug out the ground on himself, and he's now in a hole. So for the first night, he is going to literally be spending the night on the floor in the basement. And what we want to do is put in a set of stairs, and then get somebody else to prioritize the construction of those stairs so he can actually get out, otherwise our settler will starve to death and die, which of course we don't want. Uh, that's a bit less than ideal. So each night that goes past, you can see that the triple blue arrow is highlighted, 
and the game will auto save. So the game will automatically kick it into high gear. Let's select that long grass for being harvested, seeing as it's right next to the place. And of course, we've also got the barley. Uh, the animals will go and eat it if we don't select it to be harvested, um, which means you then lose the seeds that it generates for creating a harvest. Because one of the other things we will do by the end of this episode is create your first animal shelter and pen. So we will create a pen with a shelter for our animals so that they uh, aren't left to the wilds of the weather. Okay, so again, going back, looking at our schedules, jobs, everything's all good, but what you might want to do is amend. So we're gonna put construction to primary so that what she does is she focuses as a priority construction. And the reason we've done that is obviously we want good old Stanley here uh, to be able to get out of the hole that he's dug himself because he's a bit of a moron uh, decided to dig himself a hole but the good thing is he's continuing to harvest everything in there while uh, while he's trapped so until we get that staircase built he literally is unable to come in so let's prioritize so what i've done there was i right clicked prioritize construction and what she will do is she will now go and build those tiles so again prioritize construction just so we can get him out of there. So in she goes, and then prioritize. Oh, she's already working on it, good, she's learnt. That's handy. And now we can get the stairs constructed, and good old Stanley is actually gonna be able to get out at the end of the day. So he's no longer gonna be stuck in there. And this is stage two anyway, so once we've dug out everything in the middle, what we're gonna be doing is allocating this hole in the ground for our food and you only want food in there. So I will show you how to do that. Okay, so again, there's a bit more to dig out. A couple of pieces. Uh, he's a bit of a manic miner. He does seem to like mining, which is fine. We don't have anything wrong with that. But as soon as that last piece is done, pause the game. And what you want to do is go to default stockpile. Now, with the uh, comma and full stop keys, or the left arrow, right arrow keys, you can raise or lower the level of the camera so what we've done is we've lowered the level down so we can see what we're doing and in there we are going to put a default stockpile now click on your stockpile and what you want to do is shrink the zone and remove three because what you're going to do is put another set of stairs down and create a level two underground storage room so we'll mark those for being mined okay up we go again now, oh, we uh, missed part of the zone there, I can see, but what we'll do first is get the wooden floor in above, which will then seal that off as a room, and hit play again. Okay, so again, we're running the game at high speed, so everything should be constructed relatively quickly. In fact, he's off to mining again. Uh, so what we want to do now is also put in wooden floor. Uh, because you don't want your raw food items or cooked food items just sitting on the bare ground. That is a bad idea. The stuff will decompose and it will decompose quite quickly. Uh, we'll expand the zone to cover the uh, bit that we missed. And you want to untick carcasses. You want to untick waste. And that will do for now because we don't have another stockpile as of yet. So I will show you what I mean. And we also need a dumping stockpile. So that's the middle of the three. And what that is for is for carcasses and waste. So all waste and carcasses will go onto that little patch in the middle. And carcasses will then be picked up and taken to the butchering table and chopped up for meat, bones, and uh, fat, or tallow, as it is called, in the game. Right, so the floor is now finished, which is lovely. What we also want to do is um, now create another zone on the top of this floor. So we're gonna create another stockpile and then we will filter it down into what items we want to use. Uh, now let's get the barley uh, harvested because you'll notice that the harvest, uh, the barley at the front has actually been eaten by our goats. So we know that goats are ravenous monkeys, and uh, of course they've eaten all of the food, uh, which isn't great, but the harvest will uh, regrow, sorry, the barley will regrow, so it's not the end of the world. So let's find some more trees that are 50 wood, 
and let's also pause the game so that we can have a look around. So these are all red currants, so we're going to want to harvest a load of those. The mushrooms, again, are, we're going to want to harvest those. So harvest, highlight the mushrooms, and highlight the mushrooms here, and highlight the mushrooms over here. We want to harvest all of those. Again, high speed. Well, it's currently night time anyway. Uh, so the game is going to run at high speed. We've also built our research. So you want to go research and unlock architecture and agriculture. So now that we've unlocked, we can now put down our cabbage fields. Now for our cabbage fields, you want to find a space where you're going to be happy put planting them. Uh, so I think over here at the back, we've got no barley, no anything. Uh, maybe put it there or maybe over here by where the long grass is. Oh, and the game decided to auto save. Okay, so again, go back to the zone because auto saving cancels it. And how many have we got? Okay, can we do 30? Yes, we can do 30. Okay, and again, we have other types. So red current, do another load of those. So I don't know, 24, that'll do. And then barley, you want to put down some barley as well, but we don't have much. So we have six, that's as much as we currently have. But what you can then do is expand it one cell at a time and once you have the seeds, they will plant the barley there. As long as their botany skill is high enough for them to be able to plant it, because if it isn't, they won't. Now here we have our finished building. Uh, it hasn't got a roof on it yet, um, but this is what we're gonna want as a storage pile. So as you can see, they've already put in loads of stuff, uh, but we want to put another default stockpile on the top floor. So let's expand that out. There we go, that should be the right size. Now we want to remove from the basement one everything apart from food and medicine. So bye-bye, bye-bye books, bye-bye trophies, bye-bye structures, so just medicine and food. Now our top stockpile, you don't want carcasses and you don't want waste. So now what they should do is start moving everything around uh, automatically. Now, we never clicked on meals, so what you want to do is click on your campfire, click cook meals until you have, and then do about 20. And then animal feed, you want to do the same thing, so until you have, and then about 20. Now your butchering table, you want it forever, so click on your butchering table, and then just go forever. So every time we get a carcass, they'll chop it up into meat and put it into your storage. And your research table, you want to put your um, chronicles to 30. So when they have the time, they will write chronicles. And this is your research material at the beginning of the game until there are 30 of them. And they will keep making them. So as you upgrade stuff for research. Now this is a beam, which we're putting the beam across the middle of this room so that we're able to build the second floor so we can support the floor above. So they're very quickly built that and now what we want to do is put an extra wall on the top which will be our second floor now unfortunately they were very very quick off the mark because i was running the game at high speed and i didn't actually get to put any windows in but you can put them in later if you want anyway i'm just going to throw a few in on this top floor it doesn't really matter where there we go there's some windows on the top floor the next thing you want to do is your wooden floor and again put out the floor and there you go okay so now they will work on building it but of course the next thing you want is a roof now you have the option of thatched wicker and wood and then later you have uh, proper tiles but for now let's use wood as we've got plenty of trees nearby and again just click around 50 wood yep chop it down chop it down keep going 45 wood that's a dead tree that's another dead tree again 50 wood cut it down 50 wood cut it down and just mark a load of trees so say about 10 uh, and that should give you enough oh no that's a 15 that's a young tree there we go that's another one 50 and later in the game you will build a, a tree farm basically uh, by planting out the trees which is something else that you can do in the game and the game is very in-depth actually i do like it now we want a room a roof on our storage room and we will need to start prioritizing uh, taking stuff to the storage pile as well because they are just leaving stuff out in the rain and it does deteriorate 
So we do want to get it into our storage room and we also want to get the roof constructed so that our stuff is protected. Um, but we are getting near the end of the first episode. Uh, so we have our two roofs to be built and lots of trees to get be cut down. But this is the absolute best way to start the game. I, I've played it multiple, multiple times. And if you want to play the proper game, uh, this is the best way to start. Now you can do entirely custom games, which I know there are a lot of videos out there with some very fantastic castles and everything else, but that just involves unlocking everything from the beginning, so there's no challenge, and giving yourself an absolute mountain of resources. Uh, which again, to me, is not fun. Uh, that's called a custom scenario. Uh, me personally, I actually prefer the challenging aspect of the game, um, so that's why I've done it this way. Again, I was just changing the priorities there. If you were watching as I was talking, as I said, you will go around and manipulate the priorities of your settlers as you play through the game. And the next thing we want to do now is put in our animal pen. So you want to find an area that's uh, nice and clear and where you don't think you're going to be using resources uh, that you would potentially lose. So let's put it in here near our storage room. Again, the size is entirely up to you, um, but what we're going to do is we're going to build it out. There we go. And then put a roof on it and a floor. So put in the floor, put on a roof, and I'm rotating this with the Q and E key, uh, so the roof faces the different direction to the other two roofs that we've already built, just for a bit of variegation. And I'm also clicking on the entertainment tab and putting in a backgammon table because we don't currently have any entertainment for our settlers. So there we go, backgammon table in, because they will start to complain. At the part, first part of the game is fine, it doesn't matter, but if you forget to put in the backgammon table, eventually they will start getting annoyed. And now what we're going to do is put in our wicker fence, which is under that banner symbol, and build us a pen. So go out to about there, I think. Q and E key, again to rotate the fence panels. And again, put it out to whatever size you fancy, or how much space you have. And again, along we go. I know it's telling me it's already occupied, but you can hold down the button and do it. And now we need to also put in a gate. So we'll put the gate in this end. There we go, do it double. I always see it, think it looks better if you have two sides by side. So you know, you have a double gate opening, especially for cows and stuff like that later on in the game. And then click on a piece of fence, click it onto a corner and you might need to rotate it. So this one we need to rotate, rotate until it fits. It's purely aesthetics, but I still do it because I can't have a fence that looks like the animal could just squeeze through. So there we go, we have an animal pen. However, to actually dictate it as an animal pen, you need to put a pen marker in, uh, which is under the same banner icon, but I will show you that on the next episode. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is the perfect start for going medieval. I look forward to uh, doing more episodes for you guys. If there's anything you want to know, drop a comment uh, below and uh, please subscribe to my channel and drop a like uh, so the algorithm knows that you've appreciated my content. But until next time, all it leaves me to say, of course, is good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and from me, know-it-all gaming, good night.